Hello everyone, my name is Keith Hutchins and I am here with Robin who is a longtime resident at the Pinacari community in Hamilton Hill and we're here to talk about what it's like living in a sustainably designed house. You're asking what does sustainably designed mean? It means it's a house that has been constructed in a way so that it is warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer than it would be if it was just a standard design home uh, so that they don't have to spend as much money on heating and cooling the house to be comfortable in it. There's a lot of information around about the technical aspects but really the whole kind of big sell on these houses is what it feels like to live in Robin. Robin, you told me a story earlier about uh, a house that you'd lived in before mm. and how that gave you the model of what a sustainably designed house could be. Yeah. Could you so the house was absolutely the opposite of a passive solar or climate sensible house. And the only room that faced north, which is what you want in a passive solar house in the southern hemisphere, the only room in that house was the bathroom and my partner at the time would herd us into that room in the middle of winter when it was all warm and toasty inside, so a, a cold day outside with a cold sunny winter's day, and we would stand there and say, this is what our house will feel like. And that was a real penny dropping moment of, oh, that's what it feels like. So if you've got a north facing room in your house, that's what it feels like in the whole house. And now your house, what's it like, because you now have a north facing mm -hmm. house, what's it like in here in the winter? What does it feel like to be in this house? Because we, you know, we're in Perth here, we expect to have a lot of days in winter that are sunny. If it's cold outside, I close the doors, the sun comes flooding in. Um, it, if it's in the middle of winter, it'll come all the way in past here, shines on the terracotta floor, soaks up the heat, and then that will just continue to give off that heat for the rest of the day. So it's quite cosy. And so with the terracotta floor, it stays warm through the night mostly? Yeah. Yeah, and you, you can literally, you know, right now I would say, you know, you could put your hand on one tile here and one tile that would be out of the sun and you would feel the difference in the, in the yeah. tiles. These ones would be warm, not be cold. And how is the house in the summer when it's, when it's hot? Yeah, um, it, it's mostly great. Uh, again, you, you just manage, you know, we say it's passive solar, but there's always a bit of activity that has to be um, done and that's mostly around working with curtains and your, your window furnishings. So one of the questions I like to ask is if you were building the house all over again, which is a nightmare for most people, but mm. is there anything you'd do differently in this house from other houses that you've seen since then? Um, not a lot. Is it, it, it's, we, it's very basic design, so there's nothing technically fancy about this house. What would I have done? What, what, what we should have done? We probably should have... Um, wired up for PVs right from the get-go. Yeah. So I would, if you, you know, for people who are building from scratch and they can't necessarily afford everything all at once, but to put in what are the basics, if you know you want to get photo, uh, photovoltaics on your roof, then get the house wired up while it's being built so that then when you get the money to put the PVs on, you know, you just got to plug it in. What a great idea. Yeah. And you're part of a community here, and I really see community as a part of the ideas of sustainable design. Mm. What's, what's an advantage, what's an upside to being a part of a community rather than just a, a neighbour on a suburban street? I think a motive for me was having a child. That was really important. I wanted my daughter to grow up and have a whole bunch of other people that she could learn from. It seemed like a big, a big ask for me to provide all the wisdom in the world. I think, as I said earlier, it's just that opportunity to become a better person. You know, there are people who care, who you can socialise with, and nut things out, you know, you tell your challenge sometimes, but we have a commitment to be um, good neighbours, part of a community. So there's a big commitment to care, and that's an act of, um, an act of compassion and patience and, and, and determination too. And you mentioned that sometimes people cook meals for you, and I can't see anything bigger than that, really. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big draw card. So we have a common house, and, and we share meals a couple of times a week. It's great. Not having to cook seven nights a week is it's a wonderful. big, big vote for community. Sit around the fire, 
eat food. It's lovely. That somebody else cooked. <laughs> somebody else cooked. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you. So the really the takeaways from that conversation for me were that if you've got a room in your house with a north facing window, it can give you an idea of what it could be like in the winter in a sustainably designed house. The other thing that was really important for me was that this is a very simple house. It doesn't have a lot of fancy bells and whistles, but it still works as a passive solar house to be warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. And the last big takeaway for me was really the advantages of being in a community and how important that can be to living sustainably. Thank you very much.